What is going on, Jet fans? Matt O'Leary back with another video. In today's video, I want to talk about a salary cap expert's predictions for the New York Jets this offseason and why he thinks Bryce Huff is going to stick with the New York Jets. That is good news to me. We're going to get into Bryce Huff and why some Jet fans are still underrating him after all these years, but I'm excited to hear why salary cap expert Jason Fitzgerald is predicting the New York Jets to retain Bryce Huff. Okay, so Jason Fitzgerald is a salary cap expert. He is the owner and operator of the website Over the Cap. Insanely useful tool if you are a football fan and just trying to figure out what guys' contracts look like, how much salary cap your team has, what you could do with restructures or trades, and a whole lot of really fun stuff. Cut candidates, what they would save against the cap, Again, really, really good website, really, really good tool. And Jason told Rich Samini of ESPN that he believes that Bryce Huff is going to stay with the New York Jets. They're going to sign him at the 11th hour right before free agency, and he sticks with the Jets. Now, this feels against the grain on things that we've heard recently because pretty much everyone is assuming that Bryce Huff is going to go. And I don't like that assumption. It's something I've talked about for a long time on this channel, on the Talking Jets show, on the Just Jets pod, pretty much anywhere that I'm putting out my Jets opinions. I think it would be a mistake to let Bryce Huff leave. But let's talk about what he could potentially ask for and sign for and go through all the pros and cons, if you will, of that decision. So Jason is predicting that uh, he will ask for $20 million, but end up signing somewhere between the 17 to 18 million AAV range. Reminder, because this is something that's very important, just because the average annual value AAV uh, is let's say in this instance, $18 million. That does not necessarily mean that each year of his contract is going to be $18 million cap hit, $18 million cap hit, $18 million cap hit. It could fluctuate. It could change. It could start as a lower number early on and then get higher as it goes up. You could do the inverse of that. But with the jet salary cap situation for 2024, I think it would most likely make sense that it's a lower number at first, then progressively or gradually gets a little bit higher as the length of the deal goes on. So why I think it's a good idea. He's the Jets best pass rusher on the team. He's their best edge rusher. He's a homegrown developed talent. He was undrafted free agent in 2020 uh, and progressively got better and was one of the most efficient pass rushers in the NFL. And the thing that most people will point to and the reason why not to bring him back is because he he only plays X amount of snaps. And this year, it was 42% of snaps. Now, that's up from the year prior. In 2022, he only played 20% of snaps and was still an extremely proficient pass rusher and was someone that I was saying that needed more playing time. And early on this year, he really wasn't getting a lot of playing time. The production was there. For instance, the game against Kansas City had a really big game uh, early on in the season. But for the most part, it was I'd like to see this guy get some more, you know, play, play with some more snaps. And the pushback that I would get then was that uh, he, he, the reason why he's so successful is because he only plays 20%. They're only putting him in you know, the situations for him to succeed. Well, his snap count would double over the course of the season. And guess what? He was still productive. So I think that he is someone who could handle more. And I'm not saying he's going to ever play 80% of snaps. That's not his game. But if he's playing somewhere around 50% of snaps, which is only a little bit more of a tick up from his 42 then that's a great spot for the Jets, and I think he would be worth it. The other pushback that you get is, well, the Jets drafted Will McDonald in the first round last year, so they have his replacement. And while I think that probably was their original plan, you're also losing Carl Lawson, who I get will go over his snap count in a second, but you need more than two edge rushers, right? Like J.J. and J.F.M., and Will McDonald, I guess, so three. You need more than three also. Would, are most likely going to be the guys who are playing significant amount of snaps for you on the edge. And then if you add Bryce Huff in the mix, well, then that's four guys. Well, the Jets like to rotate. No one's playing 80%, so they're all going to have relatively high numbers. Like, if you go through the numbers from last year, you had J.J. at 62%. 
JFM at 55%. Then you had Bryce Huff, who we mentioned at 42%, Clemens at 32%, Will McDonald at 16%, and Carl Lawson at 8%. Carl Lawson's 8% is going to go. Michael Clemens, 32% should probably go down. Will McDonald's snap count could go up. JFM's could probably go closer to 50. JJ could be somewhere around 55 to 60. And then that way you're having, you know, most of your guys living between 40 to 60%. Those main four guys living between 40 and 60%. And it keeps those guys fresh. And on top of that, The Jets will be playing with more leads next year, which is something that rarely ever happened. Bryce Huff had a double-digit sack season in a year where the New York Jets were not a team that was playing ahead. The plan was that they would have Aaron Rodgers have leads in games and their pass rush would be closing out games for them. How many times this year did they really have opportunities to play that way? Not many. Not many at all. The Denver game at the end, guess what? You had a big play, uh, you know, uh, a really big play, you know, forced fumble on Russell Wilson, game-changing turnover at the end of the game. Uh, Another example, the Houston game. They end up knocking C.J. Stroud out of the game because they're pinning their ears back and getting after it in the fourth quarter. They are really never in a spot where they could, you know, where they're teeing off defensively against teams who are forced into positions where they are throwing the ball, which would then lead to more production for a guy like Bryce Huff and Will McDonald and more opportunities for these guys to play pass rushing snaps. If the Jets were in a spot last year where they weren't playing against the pass a ton and Bryce Huff still played 42% of the snaps and was still productive with it, Why not bring him back? And then you get the argument, well, they have to fix the offense. They do, but guess what? You can do both. It doesn't have to be one or the other. There are way, there are cut candidates with with, uh, CJ Uzama and Lakin Tomlinson that frees up money. There are restructure candidates that free up a ton of money. There are extensions with DJ Reed and Tyler Conklin that could free up money. There are ways where the Jets could get to roughly $60 million in cap space And you could fix backup quarterback, wide receiver two, offensive line, all while retaining Bryce Huff. It doesn't have to be a one or the other thing. And I just don't get so many Jet fans are going to spin zone it if to Bryce Huff actually walks that they're making, you know, a good decision here. Right. But the these are the same people that they hype up these guys who aren't actually any good or talk about oh how good this guy is and way overrate some of the guys on their own roster and then with someone who is actually good and developed and is a quality player at a high level they'll overlook it doesn't make any sense you spend five minutes on Jets Twitter, and it's like, well, you know, Bryce Huff is only good because Quentin Williams getting double teamed or you know this or that and. You know, then you you scroll back a little bit more and it's someone defending, you know, player X who, well, yeah, he stinks, but it's because X, Y, and what are we doing? Why are you spin zoning it to make out that the actual good players are worse than what they are and your bad players are better than what they are? It doesn't make any sense. So it would be in the Jets' best interest to re-sign Bryce Huff. I hope they do. I hope the Jets pay him 7 to $18 million a year because if they do, and if Aaron Rodgers is healthy next year, Bryce Huff will have an even better season than what he just had in 2023. And that doesn't mean that J.J. doesn't get to play, that John Franklin Myers doesn't get to play, that Will McDonald doesn't get to play. All four of those guys will get playing time and you can make it work in the salary cap with the salary cap space. The Jets should do it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Once again, I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll catch you guys next time.